If you've been listening to our podcast for a while, you recognize that the foundation of my teachings is the dominating edge morning routine. Now there are four pieces or practices of this morning routine. First, gratitude. Second, quieting the mind. Third, animating our future. And finally, fourth, active co-creation. Now today I want to speak with you about step number two, quieting the mind. We've previously discussed quieting the mind by sitting in a comfortable chair, feet flat on the floor, hands in your lap, right hand on top of the left, with your thumbs touching. Closing your eyes, breathing naturally, and follow the rising and falling of your chest. So as our mind begins to wander, we just bring our attention back to this rising and falling of the chest. We can just let our thoughts pass like clouds in the sky. I was returning and paying attention to this rising and falling of the chest. Now, quieting the mind is one of the most powerful practices that we have. Think of your mind as this wild stallion. (laughs) And what we're trying to do is tame this stallion, tame our wild mind. So every day we're inundated with images of what we should be, what we should do, or what we should have. On top of that, we have life's challenges, concerns, problems, and yes, even opportunities. And as we contemplate this, we recognize our mind or thoughts are in control of us versus us being in control of our thoughts. Now, there are many ways to quiet the mind in addition to sitting in meditation. You know, some people will tell me, I just can't meditate. But we do understand that meditation is a skill. It requires practice, just like any other skill you've obtained. That's why initially I asked you to sit in silence for just one minute and then work your way up. You know, it's just like going to the gym. You don't start working out by curling 30 pound dumbbells. You start with five pounds or maybe 10 and then slowly over time add additional weight. So let's talk about other ways of quieting the mind in addition to this sitting in silence. Gazing. Now with gazing, what we would do is sit in a chair similar to meditation, but with our eyes open. And we would focus on a spot in front of us. Now that could be the little red power light on your TV, possibly the gold knob on a cabinet, It could be a crack of light coming through the drapes, maybe a candle flame. And what we do is again, breathe naturally, staring at this spot, blinking as little as possible. Again, maybe for a minute to start, building your way up to five or 10 minutes. Now, occasionally during this practice, you may recognize that either the flame or the object itself that you're staring at may disappear as you're staring at it, or the things around it may become fuzzy, cloudy, or even disappear. This is universal intelligence in action. This is a recognition of the power, this presence within you. Another option for quieting the mind would be chanting. Now you could buy a string of mala beads at eBay or maybe a metaphysical bookstore in your town. Mala beads are the beads that you see Buddhists or monks wearing almost like a necklace. So this necklace contains 108 beads. And here's the significance of that number, 108. 
The number one stands for one power, one presence, one truth, one light, one love, oneness. The zero signifies that we are whole, perfect, and complete. Nothing is missing from our lives. Finally, the eight is the infinity sign, signifying that our life never ends. We are in this continual movement through life, through this life and into the next. So what you would do is sit in a chair with these mala beads in your hand and pull one bead with your thumb over the top of your finger at a time using a chant. Now there are many chants. The oldest chant on the planet is simply OM, O-H-M. So as you pull a single bead across your finger, you would say OM. Pull another OM. Pull another OM. 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 You would do that for 108 beads. At the end, you could flip it around and go back again for another 108, depending upon how much time you have. Each time you complete 108, it's considered a mala. Now, at one point in my life, I remember I would do 10 rounds of these, maybe on a Saturday when I had plenty of time. It would take 40, 45 minutes, but when I got done with that, my body would just be buzzing just vibrating in such an amazing space. Just to feel that is empowering. So what I hope you recognize is that there are many ways to quiet the mind in addition to sitting in meditation. I used to watch my grandmother sit in her home crocheting. Now it was not her intention, at least I don't think so, at the time to be in meditation. But I recognize now that in fact, when she continued this movement, stitch after stitch after stitch, the quietness of that space with that repetitive motion, she in fact was communing with the divine. Now, if sitting in silence in meditation has been a challenge for you, then look to one of these methods or dozens of others to quiet the mind. Each morning, with no exception, we must use these dominating edge practices to quiet our mind, to take control of ourselves and our thoughts and then move out into the day intentionally, co-creating the life of our dreams.